Welcome, and today we're going to be looking at some hardware. As you'll remember from the introduction video, the Teletype has an in-jack and a parameter pot on the front panel, and these are used to input values to the Teletype from the outside world. The in-jack will accept voltages from 0 to 10 volts, which will by default be converted to a value range of 0 to 16,383 by the Teletype. And likewise, the parameter pot will also by default give values in the range 0 to 16,383. When looking at these ops in the reference document, you'll see that both pieces of hardware share the same format. And so, for the purposes of this video, I'll be explaining the ops for both the in-jack and the parameter pot at the same time. So the in and param ops are really straightforward and are used to obtain a value from the in-jack and the parameter pot. The command structure is simply in and param with no following values. And both ops, by default, will return a value in the range 0 to 16,383, depending on what is being fed into the jack or the position the parameter pot is set to. Getting values from these inputs in the range 0 to 16,383 is great, but what if you need a different range of values to work with in your script? In this case, we would use the in and param scale ops. These ops are constructed by starting with either in or param, followed by a dot and the word scale. They will then require two further values, the minimum value and the maximum value of the desired range. The usable range for these ops is between minus 32,768 at its minimum and 32,767 at its max. The dot cal min and max ops allow us to calibrate the in jack and the parameter pot. The format for these ops are as follows. To set the minimum values, you would use in.cal.min and param.cal.min, and for the maximum, in.cal.max and param.cal.max. So as an example, if the param.cal.min op is executed, the position that the pot is currently at will be set to zero. And when the param.cal.max op is executed, the current position of the pot will be updated to the maximum value of the currently set scale which by default is 16,383, but could be whatever has been set using the in or param.scale op. So for the example patch today, we have three drum samples on the ER301 and a kind of baseline thing happening on the Laquelic. The drums are being individually triggered by trigger outputs one to three of the teletype, CV1 is providing some volts per octave for the Laquelic, with CV2 and 3 modulating a couple of the Laquelic's parameters. The Laquelic is being fed into the Desmodus, which is having its tone control changed by CV4, and Trigger Out 4 is triggering the ADSR for the Laquelic. So let's take a look at the code for this patch. I'm going to start off with our iScript. And the first thing I'm going to do is set the metronome to run at a speed of 50 milliseconds. And what this does is it allows the metronome to constantly be reading the parameter pot and the in jack for any changes that might happen. The higher the speed of the metronome, the more resolution you're going to get. And once we've done that, we're going to set the scale of the in jack and the parameter pot. And the way we do that is by typing in dot scale and set the range that we'd like the in jack to run with. In this case, it's going to be between one and six. And then we're going to do the same with the parameter pot. So param dot scale, and we're going to set this range between one and 10. So just while we're here, I'm going to add a quick CV slew for our pitch CV. So CV dot slew 
it's going to be on CV1 and I'll set that to 60 milliseconds. So that's our I script done. If we hop over to the metronome script now, and there's just going to be a couple of lines of code in here. And these are just the lines of code which are going to read our values from the inJack and the parameter pot, and then store them into two variables. So the first variable will be x, and we're going to store our in value into x. And then we'll have y, and that will be our parameter value. And you'll notice that both of those variables are global variables, so they can be used within any script within our code. Moving over to script one, and we're gonna use some code that we used from our previous video. We're gonna use some if statements. So the first one is if x, which is our in value, is equal to one, we're gonna trigger output one. Then we're gonna use an l if statement, and we're gonna say is x equal to two, if it is, we're going to trigger output two. Hopefully this should all seem fairly familiar to you. And our last line is going to be an else statement, and that will be triggering trigger output three. So that is all the code done for the drums. Let's move on to the baseline and head over to script two. So the first line over here is just going to be storing some note values in the local variable j. So j n dot s which is our note scale conversion, followed by a couple of values. And we're just gonna pick some notes in the range four to six. Don't worry too much about that though. I will cover the note ops uh, in future videos. So we're gonna send the value stored in J out on CV1. And that will be our volts per octave note values going to Laquelic for the baseline. And then I'm going to give CVs two to four some random values that will just be controlling some parameters of the Laquelic and the Desmodus. So CV2 is going to have a random value between zero and 7,000. And actually, I'm going to do the same for CV3 and four. So I'm going to copy and paste a couple of times there. Change that to three. And that one to CV4. And then lastly, we just need to trigger our ADSR so that we can hear a note from the baseline. And to do this, I'm gonna use prob. Prob is just a probability function. And for this, I'm gonna give the trigger a 50% chance that it will actually fire. And we're gonna use trigger output four. And lastly, I'm just gonna hop over to script three and I'm gonna code our random C trick. So we've got some repetition going on. So for this, I'm gonna provide the random seed with our value that we're obtaining from the parameter pot, which is stored in Y. But if you remember, we've also got some probability happening here, and we would want that to repeat as well as the randomness. So there is a seed for that as well. And the way we use it is by saying prob.sd. And we'll also provide the variable Y for that as well. So now we've done the main part of the code, I just wanted to hop back to the init script just to explain why it is that I've provided the in scale with a range of one to six. So as I said earlier, the in jack accepts a voltage between zero and 10 volts. And the random voltage that I have coming into the jack is from Pamela's new workout, which is only zero to five volts. So to make this example work with the three drums, I need the in jack to provide me with values of one to three. And because we're only using half the voltage that the in jack will accept, I have to put a range of one to six. Zero to two volts will trigger drum one, two to four volts, drum two, and four to five volts, drum three. So now what you should see when I start the sequence is the in jack providing us with values between one and three, and the drums one to three being triggered randomly. And in addition to that, when I turn the parameter pot, we should be able to hear the sequence change to new random seed.
So in addition to the patch example, I just wanted to cover the calibration ops, just to make that a little clearer. So the code I've put together here is pretty similar to the patch. We've got the metronome running at 50 milliseconds, and we've got the value of the parameter pot being stored in the variable x. So if I go over to the variable screen, we can see that the position of the parameter pot is currently set at its minimum, and x is reading zero. So what we should expect when I turn the parameter pot up is for our maximum value to be 16,383. But as you can see, my parameter pot's a little bit off, which can happen occasionally with potentiometer drift. So in this case, we would use the calibration max command for the parameter pot. So in live mode, I would type param.cal.max with my parameter pot turned to its maximum position. If I now hit enter, that will be recalibrated to 16,383. And if I take the pot all the way down to the bottom, at its minimum value, it's zero. And now at its maximum value, we have 16,383. Simple. So that's your lot for this one. Thanks again for watching and I'll see you next time. Cheers.